Next up, we have, uh, we have Jay Davis. Um, he's an expert in video uh, for crowdfunding campaigns. He's a director of video services for iZeni or at iZeni. Jay's experience in software business and product development and was the creator and producer of Scott DW, uh, producer at Scott DW, where he and Scott Wynn created a YouTube channel and combined custom music, uh, comedy, and stunning visuals, getting 25 million views on their first five videos, which is awesome, by the way. <laughs> uh, recently, his firm, Creatively, an experiential marketing agency, was acquired by Azeni, located in Provo, Utah. So he's gonna address this for about 20 minutes today. Welcome, Jay Davis. Can everybody hear me okay? Um, Dan gave me the best introduction anyone could give me, uh, talking about virality. So, um, <laughs> like Dan said, I actually agree. Don't trust people who say they can guarantee to take you viral. Um, it's a very tricky space, but if you're crazy enough to want to try, uh, that's kind of what I've been asked to present on. So, uh, like was said earlier, I uh, started my career at Vivint doing product development, product design, then left to help start a company called The Color Run. I was one of the first employees there. Uh, we did a bunch of viral videos, and 18 months later, it was the largest event company in the world. Um, then went and started a YouTube channel, uh, Scott DW. If you've ever seen Fruit Ninja that we did with the company that made the Fruit Ninja app, uh, it's now at 30 million views. Um, and since then have been part of a lot of awesome viral campaigns um, and a lot, of, a lot of video work as well. I don't just do viral campaigns. So hopefully I can give you guys some practical information on uh, whether you want to really try to do you know, the biggest Kickstarter ever or if you're just trying to figure out how to make your uh, campaign a little bit more shareable, a little more viral. Hopefully um, I can give you some great information. And really virality is all uh, about, and I think business as well, entrepreneurship, it's all about synergy. You know, we, it's hard to create a viral campaign around a really terrible product. Um, so you need a great product, you need great marketing, um, and, and that's really required. Um, so just kind of a first little caveat. Um, as entrepreneurs, we're always optimistic. We're always, uh, you know, we're always gonna figure it out. We're always gonna figure out a way but we need to be careful of silver bullets. Viral campaigns uh, do not solve all problems. Um, even as we helped, have helped other companies create viral campaigns, often uh, that causes more problems or creates more problems than it actually solves. Um, I never thought that until I went to the Color Run and saw what it was like to go from no money to $100 million in revenue over 18 months. That's an insane process. Um, and it causes a lot of problems and a lot of headaches. And so it's not always the easy cakewalk that you might think it might be. Um, and so be careful what you wish for. Like Dan was saying with Coolest Cooler, uh, I think two years ago we all would have said we want that campaign, that'd be like our dream. Uh, now no one would take that guy's place. Um, so, but I think no matter what you're doing, you can use some of these elements to help your campaign become, become better and more shareable. So, First thing I wanted to answer was, what is virality? What, what does it mean when something is viral? Um, so something that a lot of people use, I stole this from someone else, is uh, a share quotient. And that's essentially that every time you share it, uh, it gets shared at least one or more times by the, someone who saw that original share. Um, so some things are more viral. Uh, there's things that are hyper viral. There's things that are just barely viral. Um, you know, every time it gets sh shared, it gets shared again one and a half times. You have stuff that um, when we were doing Fruit Ninja, every time it got shared, it got shared another 50 times, uh, sometimes even higher, sometimes lower, because it was, uh, we, were, we built it to be viral. Um, so as you're building your campaign, no matter what you're doing, remember to make it easy to share. That is you know, one of the essential pieces of virality. If there's nothing there for someone to share, an image, a uh, short video, some, some little sound bite, uh, it makes it really hard for people to share it and for it to go viral. Um, so what is the, the root of virality? I really like, if, if you haven't read Contagious, uh, I would highly recommend it. It's by Jonah Berger. Uh, he's, a, he's a Wharton uh, professor who studies virality. 
Um, and he said, virality isn't born, it's made. When we care, we share. Um, so what is the root of that caring? Um, like Dan was saying, with emotion, you have to strike emotion. And the emotion that gets people to share and make something go viral is unexpectedness. Um, if you look at all viral videos, all of them are rooted in unexpectedness, whether that's unexpectedly scary, unexpectedly funny, um, you know, it's something that's cute. All of the things are based in this unexpectedness. Um, so the question you have to ask yourself is, how can I make my campaign unexpected? Um, let's see if this will actually play. There we go. I'm just going to show this. Let's see if the sound comes through. If you haven't seen this before, it's a lot better with the music, but. Um, this video is of a guy in New York um, who decided to dress up as Aladdin on a, a boosted board and go through New York. And why I wanted to use this as an example um, is because both the unexpectedness of what he did, but you also can see the unexpectedness, like right there. you watch, go through this, you can see people's reaction and the unexpected reaction that everyone has. And this guy's not famous. It's not like they're seeing Brad Pitt or anything. So, that is the, the core emotion that we're, that we're going for. Um, so, I wanted to give you guys some examples, some practical examples of different unexpected campaigns. And hopefully this gives you a conceptual framework to start looking at Kickstarters in a different way. Uh, if we go through all the most popular Kickstarters, you start to see trends that every Kickstarter follows. Um, you have your campaigns that are unexpectedly ahead of their time. Uh, the product itself seems like it's out of a science fiction movie. Uh, it's something that we didn't think was available, but now all of a sudden is, and Kickstarter is great for those types of products. 3D printers, uh, the Oculus Rift, the free digital pencil, they're all things that we thought were a couple years out, and all of a sudden they're on Kickstarter. Um, and so that is that unexpectedness. People didn't think it was ready. Um, the other one that is very popular is the unexpected Swiss Army knife. Uh, you have some people who take a normal product, like a cooler, like a jacket, like a parka, and they turn it into a Swiss Army knife. They make, it is not about the individual features, uh, but it is more about kind of the, the group of features. All of a sudden, this cooler blends. It has plates and knives stuck in it. It has music. It's waterproof. It has bigger wheels. It's an infomercial product. Um, and I, that's where I would say, if anything, the coolest cooler guy kind of lost his way, he started to think that the individual features were important and started spending time upgrading all those, not realizing that no one cared about the individual features. It was all of them together. It didn't need a better blender. He just needed a blender because it was putting everything together that made it unexpected and viral. Um, there's the smart parka. There's tons of these um, if you go through. Uh, the unexpectedly useful. They're products that solve a problem. Um, in an un unexpected way or solve a nuisance that we never even realized was really that big of a nuisance. Um, and whenever you see these, people always say, man, I thought of that 10 years ago. I should have done it. Um, or I always wanted something like this. Some great examples even here from Utah, Snap Power. You see that like outlet that snaps into the wall uh, and makes it easy to light up your hallway? It's a great idea. Uh, that just is totally unexpected. You never thought, oh, you could combine a light with an outlet. Um, and then you have the products that are just really unexpectedly great. They spend a lot of time uh, thinking of all the little details. They're often in a niche. Uh, and so you have things like the slide camera sling, if you've ever seen that one. It's just the greatest, as a video person, it's the greatest product uh, to put your camera into. So the field skillet, uh, there's been so many more. So the million dollar question for all of you uh, you might be farther along in the, in the process, and so uh, hopefully you can still figure out some ways to make your campaign unexpected. But if you're starting from the beginning, uh, I ask myself, how can I make this campaign unexpected? What are some of 
the different principles that I can draw in? What are some of these other campaigns? Uh, what did they do to make this an unexpected product? Um, and a lot of that is around how you message and how you position your product so that people feel that unexpectedness. Um, and as you go through, you can even see, like, the coolest cooler, go watch their videos. There's a huge difference between the Swiss Army Knife video uh, and the video that's talking about this new technology. You know, the Oculus Rift is like, you know, it's finally here, we're gonna now do VR. Uh, the Swiss Army Knife is like an infomercial. It feels like an infomercial. There's this, there's this, and there's more. Here's the other thing. So, um, it is much easier to create a video around a viral campaign uh, than to create a viral video around a product that doesn't have any unexpectedness. So, hopefully I didn't surprise anyone when you were thinking you were coming to a presentation about viral videos. Um, but these things then carry through. So if you start from the beginning by building an unexpected campaign, it is much easier to carry that through all of your marketing uh, than to come to me at the end and say, hey, we have this product and we want to make a video with zombies in it because no one's ever seen that before. So, and I get that asked all the time. Um, so when you're, when you're doing your video, uh, hopefully this gives you some time to think about this and add some unexpected things. Uh, make sure that you explain what is the problem, what is the solution, how is that un solution unexpected if possible, uh, and then do the features solve the problem. I think that's the easiest structure uh, for a video. What is the problem, highlight that pain, then go into the solution, and then every feature and how that feature solves the original problem that you, that you talked about. And then credibility and a call to action. So if you want a simple formula for a great video, there it is. Um, be intellectually honest, you know, ask people who are not your mom whether this is a great product. Um, try and find people who can give you really honest feedback and test everything. We are super fortunate in that uh, it's been amazing to me, even five years ago when I was doing videos, I was hiring helicopters real helicopters to come shoot footage because drones weren't quite there. Um, and now look where we are five years later, anyone can go buy a drone for like 600 bucks. So, and all of us have in our pocket a video camera that shoots high definition footage. Um, so rather than kind of waiting and storyboarding forever uh, and writing scripts and going back and forth, just start shooting. Uh, pull out your iPhone, start shooting, start getting the messaging, start seeing what works, what is unexpected, what is not. Um, and that's great, even if you're gonna use a consultant, even if you're gonna hire someone professionally to do your video, uh, the more you have and the more you can give them in, in terms of the positioning and the messaging that's gonna be important, the better. Um, and then if you need help, uh, like Bryce said, I recently joined iZeni. Um, iZeni does technology, design, marketing, and video. Um, and it's a great company, we love startups, and that's why I was so excited to join, because they really are uh, kind of the center of entrepreneurship down in Utah Valley. Um, so if you need help, whether that's just need some consulting, and you just wanna sit down, sit down for lunch and talk about your product, all the way to, some of you may say, I just wanna not even do this, I wanna have you do the whole campaign. Uh, we've done everything in between, so uh, do your video. So yeah, I'll open it up to, to questions now. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, we always say in video that, that half of the video is, is what you see and half is what you hear. Um, so it drives me crazy. Like, I don't know if anyone saw the... Uh, can't remember the name of it. It's that like sack that you open and then you like snap it around and it turns into a couch. Has anyone seen that Kickstarter? Uh, it drives me crazy because I can hear in the background that they didn't license the music. You can hear like licensed by music bed. Um, so things like that, I, I hear that and it drives me crazy. But also the, the music is really going to give you the emotion of your video. Um, so you need to be careful in, in choosing music that kind of matches the feeling that you want. Um, Musicbed, for example, is a great service because you can go in and say, I want something that's happy. Uh, I want something that's more cinematic. So if, you have, if you're trying to go for, for more of that ahead of its time, there's a product no one's ever seen, we're five years ahead of what people thought would be coming out right now, 
uh, a cinematic song is really great because it adds that kind of uh, drama. Um, if you're doing something like the bunch of balloons where you know you can fill up 100 balloons at once, then you're looking for more something fun and remind people of summer. Um, and as you think about that, now that I've kind of pointed that out, you'll, you'll see it all over the place when you look at videos. You'll notice how that a good video uses music to kind of create the mood. Say that again, so what to do? Uh, music bed. Okay. So music bed, B E D dot com. Uh, there's also pond five, and it's, it's the number five, not written out. P O N D number five dot com. Uh, they have, music bed is really great because they have music from artists that have lyrics and that are a little more popular. Um, Pond5 is kind of more stock music. Uh, we were paying like $30, $40 for a song. Music bed, you're usually paying $200 up to $1,000 for a song. Yeah. 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 Um, that's always a hard question because uh, it really depends on kind of the campaign. We've, we've done videos uh, anywhere from $5,000 that's kind of more simple, uh, straightforward, up to $50,000 or higher. Um, but those are usually for, for bigger companies who are trying to use Kickstarter to reach a new crowd. Um, so I would say usually like if you're using a professional uh, agency, you're usually going to be looking somewhere in like the five to $15,000 range. Uh, if you want to just go find like a student, uh, usually you're going to pay like maybe two or three grand. So. Okay, we got a question back here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, like envision for uh, drafting out what you want your site or your yeah. service to look like. Is there a video tool that will allow you to create kind of quick video that you can test for the messaging components and things before you spend big money? Um, I think probably the easiest one would be iMovie, honestly, um, where you can take some footage on your iPhone, you can then even edit on your iPhone, uh, and just kind of start clipping things together. Um, so yeah, that's, there really isn't like an Envision kind of parallel that I know of. There may be one that's out there. Uh, but that's what I would say. Just start shooting with your, your iPhone or your, you know, whatever phone you have, and then bring it into iMovie and start editing kind of here's the messaging. Um, and that really helps. That's what, what I often will do is before, um, you know, before we shoot a big budget video, uh, we start kind of putting together either storyboards or even just videoing ourselves in our basement, kind of here's how this is going to look and feel. So um, storyboarding is great, but most people don't storyboard a three minute video. It's a common misconception. A lot of times people come to me and say, when am I getting the storyboards on our Kickstarter, I don't usually pay a storyboard artist to do that, um, especially when an iPhone is so easy to kind of create the visual and the look and the feel. So that's what I would suggest. Okay, so Jay, we have a question back here. Yeah. The very back. In, in your video with Aladdin, yeah. you, you played a little clip of the Aladdin song. When is that a copyright violation for, for song clips or video clips? Yeah. So that actually wasn't my video, just so. I don't portray as if it was. Uh, but, but the issue, um, so they would have copyrighted, went and gotten a license for the copyright of the original song, and then they paid a DJ to remix it. Um, so you do still have to get the copyright. Essentially, anytime you're using um, licensed music, uh, you can be blocked. Uh, YouTube right now, usually what they're doing is, if you're not trying to monetize it, then they will not come after you. Uh, the biggest problem that we found, one of the things we do with Kickstarter um, that we found is so successful is because the video is such a great way to explain the product, we create the video and then we do an ad campaign in YouTube. So when people are watching YouTube videos and they say they like you know, outdoor products, we play our ad before them, uh, before that video that they're watching um, because it's a really low cost way to advertise to your target audience. It's incredible, you can go into to YouTube or Facebook and I can choose demographic, how much money people make, what college degree they have, uh, what city they live in, and I can hyper-focus my campaign on them. So that's why we use things like Musicbed, where we get the licensing up front so we don't run into issues where, uh, if you are trying to run it as an ad, they will come after you if you used a popular song and didn't get the right copyright. 
stuff figured out. So. All right, we have, I think, one more question. We'll see where we're at. Yep. One more question, thanks. So is there value into having like low budget, really crappy videos that you're starting a YouTube channel, you're using your phone, and you're just doing a bunch of videos? Maybe they stink or maybe they're just very unprofessional. Is that good? Or do, I mean, does it, does it work? Yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of times for entrepreneurs, perfectionism is our greatest enemy. Uh, we kind of have this mentality of, I'm either going to do it right or I'm not going to do it at all. Uh, and a lot of customers don't care. Uh, I've worked on a lot of campaigns where the first couple videos, like showing tests and stuff, um, we just shot on a phone and posted to YouTube just to show people, like, hey, here's an early response. So that's another very common mistake first time crowdfunding people make is they think that they have to wait and, like, Oh, we can't release anything. This is so secretive until the day of our campaign. That's the worst thing you can do. Start marketing way ahead of your campaign. Tell people you're doing the campaign. Run Facebook ads. Start seeing if there's response before you spend all this money uh, you know, going and doing the crowdfunder. So don't be afraid to share your idea. Shoot stuff on your phone. Say, hey, this is an early prototype. We're just trying it out. We're seeing if this is going to work. Um, and then you start getting response from real people. You can even then go into Facebook, post that video to Facebook, just say boost post. You don't need to know Facebook advertising very well, and just boost that post and see what the response is. Uh, you know, I've worked on things where we did that, and then people were loving it, and then we realized they thought it was a different product. They thought it was something completely different from what we were selling, and we realized, oh, that was a good thing to know before we started the Kickstarter. So really simple ways, you can spend $10 on, on Facebook, boost that post, uh, you, know, you can get thousands of people to watch it and get some real feedback before you launch the campaign. So that's the whole idea of you know, Kickstarter. You don't have to wait till Kickstarter to start getting feedback. So getting feedback, 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 so.